what's up? You are tuned into Music Box, where you can see the latest in American music videos. I am your humble host, Maria Cosette, and today, of course, we have a great show for you. I have with me guitarist and lead singer of the band Eternal Mind Control. They're awesome. You guys could check them out at facebook.com slash eternal mind control. And of course, you can check us out on Facebook. Become a fan. Go to facebook.com slash music box show. We have a great lineup of music videos, so stay tuned. Hey guys, what's up? I am here with my guest, one of the guitar players for the band Eternal Mind Control, Krikos. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm very excited to have you here, and halfway through the show, we're going to bring on your lead singer, Kat. But first, I'm going to drill you a bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my first question for you is, how did the band form? Well, the band formed about a year, year and a half ago. It mm -hmm. was my friend and I, my friend gave me a call, and he just decided, you know, do you still play guitar? I said yes, so I picked up the guitar. He decided to pick up drums, so we would just play just in my room we would just come and jam a little bit right. and then uh, my little sister would hear us play and he, she goes to Pilibos and she figured out that one of the Yay, teachers <laughs> Yay teachers at Pilibos Anyways, yeah. go on. <laughs> So one of the teachers that uh, they play he plays bass so he went up to him and asked him are you looking for a band and he was so we got in contact with him and uh, we ended up meeting we ended up playing with him his name is Vartan and Surprisingly, he's also from the fraternity I'm in, which I didn't know he was a teacher at Pilibos. Oh, so you frat brothers yeah, always stick together. we had to stick together. <laughs> so, continuing on the frat brother thing, um, one of our frat brothers, uh, Nautic, is he came in contact with me. He said, are you looking for any other instruments in your band? Uh, he said, I have a brother that plays saxophone, you know, nice. it might work out. So, he gave me Nighty's uh, contact number, so we got, in, got a hold of him. Talk to him about, you know, maybe we can bring a sax player into our band and see what we can incorporate. Nice. So when he came in uh, and we spoke to him, he said he's more comfortable playing keyboards or piano. Right. So the sax thing kind of went on the side burner and he picked up his keyboard. So we started incorporating that. And then our second guitarist, Hike, again, one of our, my cousins, he's one of his closest friends. So we got in contact with him and... We were, we were just trying out guitarist after guitarist and nothing was working out. Right. And once Hike came in, it just pretty much clicked. Like, besides musically, it's personalities that we look oh, for. Oh, I completely agree. And with bands especially, uh, the reason why I give mad props, I should say, to a lot of bands that stay together is that it's very hard to keep a band together. Mm -hmm. The chemistry really matters. So it's good you guys all kind yeah, of and every, came together. And nobody in the band just was picked out of the street. You know, every, there's always some type of a connection. Like right. our singer Kat, one of her friends uh, got in contact with us and said, I have a friend, she sings. I heard you guys are looking for a singer. Nice. So she came, she tried out. And again, personalities clicked. We liked her voice. We liked... She's really good at writing lyrics, so it, everything just clicked really well. And awesome. Besides just work, like one of the biggest things of tr being a part of a band is you need to be able to hang out with each other, understand right, each other, exactly. joke around with each other. You know, you can't just be business 24-7. Yeah, no, of course not. Yeah. So everything clicks, and that's pretty much how it went. Nice, nice. Yeah. And so you mentioned frat, so I really wanted to uh, kind of get into that because mm -hmm. that means you guys all have an education as well yes. and on music box we like to convey a positive message to our youth um so where did you attend i went to cal state la graduated there um i majored in computer science so right cool. now i'm a software developer and awesome. uh, all of our guys you know and girl have an education they've all graduated they've and it's one of it had been their number one priority and starting a career everybody's on the on the right track and right. you know being in a band doesn't mean you have to stop what you're doing drop all the all the jobs you have you know stop your career and just focus on the band right. you can do both and one is that if you don't have a career you don't have a job there's really no way you can um, push forward in the band aspect. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, attaining an education also in turn inspires you mm -hmm. in making music and further it. And I hate to say that music is a hobby because it's not. I think mm -hmm. it moves parallel along with your right. life. Right. Yeah. And it's a big thing. You know, you can't, if it's a hobby, it sadly you probably won't get anywhere. But so it has to be a little bit more than a hobby. It, it, you have to think of it as your second career. Yeah, right? You're exactly. holding two jobs. Exactly. Yeah. And people are way too passionate about music yeah. for it to just to be. It's, we're not collecting stamps here. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you, it's really interesting for me. I ask all the artists that come on here, what are some of your uh, favorite rock musicians? Well, I 
when it comes to rock music, I enjoy the bands that do something a little bit different. Uh -huh. For example, you know, one of my favorite bands is a band called Mindless Self Indulgence. Uh -huh. And they're rock music, but they still always have that silly aspect to it. You know, they're always, you can tell they're having a great time, right. they're having fun, and they're kind of segueing from the mainstream a little bit. So, yeah. Any, any musician or any artist that's doing their own thing, you know, you can you can be a rock band or a hard rock band and not just follow the mainstream and just don't do it by the numbers. Right. Just put your own feeling into it, put your own personality into it, and it'll shine and it'll show. Yeah, again, I totally agree with you. Um, I think any artist that's innovative and brings something new to the table mm -hmm. is the one that's going to succeed inevitably. Um, and what about your inspirations? Like, what were you inspired by maybe to begin even making music mm -hmm. and what inspires you today? Um, I, I listen to a lot of kind of the heavier stuff. I listen to more metal. I listen to Black Sabbath. My One of my favorite bands oh, is Behemoth, Hypocrisy, and just weird bands that a lot of people just lump as just noise. Right. But you know, it's interesting to me and I like the aggression and that's been my biggest motivation is just listening to those bands and listening to the intricate lines and just listening to how how much fun they're having, you know, playing their instrument, regardless right. of what, whatever it is, you know. So guitar was one of my, the first things I picked up because at the time in Pilibos, everybody was playing guitar. So I said, why not me? I, <laughs> I need to pick up a guitar too. So I picked it up and just listening to the music, it, that, that, that's what got me into playing guitar the most. Cool. And what are your thoughts on rock music today? Um, today, I think rock music, uh, like I was saying before, it's, it's sad to say, but at least the, what, I, what I hear on the radio is very by the numbers again. And it's difficult for the bands that are trying to do something different and something new to get their voice heard or their music heard. Right. Because it's just not something that everybody can easily digest. So we're hoping, at least we'd like to think our music isn't really by the numbers and we're doing something at least a little bit differently. But still, I guess, mainstream enough where people won't be turned off by it at, right. fir at first glance. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes... Um you can't really do everything you want creatively and that goes for me as an right. artist as well which is annoying to the artist because you just want to create freely mm -hmm. but sometimes you kind of have to conform to what the audience is and, and that's exactly i think we all of us have understood that aspect of it because you know again with the music i listen to it's not really played on the radio and we have to take that into consideration if we want our music to go out to people and people to listen to our music and enjoy right. it we have to it's a it's a give and take we yeah. have to give sometimes and we have to take sometimes so nice uh what advice would you give for um aspiring armenian american musicians that want to get into music and want to pursue their music well number one one of the main things i would say is music is going to be a second job it's going to be a, something you're going to have to dedicate a lot of time to but this doesn't mean you're going to have to cut off everything else in your life you don't cut off family friends school work because of it but it's something you need to try really hard to get good at. If you enjoy it, you'll automatically get good at it because you're gonna spend every free time you have practicing, playing, talking to your musician friends, right. trying to come up with new ideas. So if you're trying really hard and you're really enjoying what you're doing, it really doesn't matter what a lot of people say regarding your music. If you're having a great time and it's making you happy, you know, you just keep going forward. Just don't forget everything else in your life and make sure you have your priorities straight. Nice, well said. And uh, my last question for you uh, before we bring on Kat, the singer of Eternal Mind Control, is um, <clears throat> what would you consider to be the pinnacle of your career? Where do you see yourself? Like, where would you be where you're like, oh my God, I, like, I made it, dude? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Um, I like to think, I'm assuming just like every other band that, you know, eventually we'll get somebody, we'll get discovered because we played some show, maybe at the Troubadour, at the Viper Room, and somebody really liked us and said, you know what, I'm going to get you guys a tour in Europe and get all this going. And we have music on our website and it lets us know where where the people who listen to our music are oh, listening from. I love the internet. I know my fan page too is the best thing ever. Yeah. I'm like... Wow, really? Like Thailand? It's really cool how you could do that. Yeah, yeah, like one of our new songs, we just started, we just recorded uh, three new songs. So we just started releasing them. And one or two of our songs, I was checking it a couple days ago and we had a couple hits from Australia. That's so So awesome. I don't even know how it got to Australia, but seeing things like that is amazing. Yeah, so like of course. Having, maybe having some type of tour in Europe where they've actually want you to come and it's not like I'm forcing myself on them. Yeah. You know, there's like a fan base or something in Europe and they're asking you to come. So. I think it, it just being known a little bit outside of your community, outside of 
your situation, it would, would be awesome. Yeah, that is. That is. Well, thank you so much, Krikor. Thank you. And uh, you guys stay tuned. And of course, for all further information about Eternal Mind Control, you can go to facebook.com slash eternal mind control. Stay with us. We'll be back with Kat, the lead singer of the band. Thanks for staying tuned to Music Box. And I am here with Kat, the lead singer of the band Eternal Mind Control. How are you, pretty lady? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, so I have some uh, juicy questions for you. Everyone is tuned in and ready to hear about your band. So I want to ask you, what's your creative process? Well, the guys usually start the process. One of them comes in with whatever they come up with. And then I think everybody just goes from that point on. And um, so they write the music, they get it all together. Once they're done with that, then they give it to me, and then I do the lyrics. Oh, nice. So you're the songwriter as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Good to know. And what's the vibe like in the studio or wherever you guys rehearse? Like, how do your rehearsal sessions run? Um, well, we rehearse Monday through Wednesday, and, I mean, we just get there, we rehearse. But we also talk, we have fun. You know, we're very, we're like a family, so sometimes we just hang out. Sometimes drink wine. Awesome. But we practice too. Yeah, we practice a lot. Nice, nice. Yeah. So with, yeah, positive vibes, good music yes. comes out. Yes. Um, so you guys have performed at a lot of venues in the LA area. What are some of maybe the memorable performances you've had? I think my personal favorite has been at the Viper Room. What the oh, we cool. played there. I love the Viper Room. Yeah, and there was a catwalk, and I just had so no much pun intended. <laughs> it was a catwalk. It was a catwalk, <laughs> and I was just like up and down and just having so much fun with it and the crowd was into it and it was just a lot of fun. I love when the crowd is into it and you have that energy and it just gets you going even more and I like to jump around. And yeah, get, definitely. Yeah. It really, I mean, it sucks as a performer, let me tell you guys, when the crowd isn't responding, like you really feed oh. off the energy. Oh, definitely. Once yeah. they're just into it, you're like, yeah, you get into way more than Yeah, normal. exactly. Yeah. And you have an incredible voice, by the way, I have to tell you. It's very powerful, oh, very soulful, uh, very impressionable. And um, so back to the venues, what are some venues that you guys maybe want to perform at in the future? Some goals that you may have? Um, maybe House of Blues, the Whiskey. Awesome. Yeah. Nice, nice. And uh, would you want to travel as well? Because um, if you guys were tuned in a little earlier, you guys obviously have some fans in Australia. <laughs> I would love to travel. I mean, I love traveling and if I could you know do it musically i would love to do that i know wouldn't it be the best yeah. thing yeah yeah exactly that was kind of a silly question on my <laughs> part um what are some things you guys are working on and fans can expect in the upcoming year um right now we are taking a break from um playing shows mm -hmm. and we're just gonna focus on writing more, more music nice I don't know how much we're going to write, but that's our main focus right now. So Good. Yeah. And what's the uh, general kind of sound that you guys have created as a band? I don't, I don't know how, I mean. Like, I, I mean, I heard it. I just thought maybe I would ask you. It is, um, it is rock, obviously. Yeah, it is rock. And some, we get that question and we never really know how to answer it. We're just like. It, Which it's is kind rock. of good because it means you guys are different. I'd like to hope so. Yeah, it is very like, melodic. Um, it's very pretty. It's maybe a little bit alternative. I don't know. That's just my opinion as a listener. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's very beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, and again, just to let you guys know, you can go on Facebook and find out everything about Eternal Mind Control, facebook.com slash eternal mind control. So um, other than Facebook, where could people find your music? We're on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, um, I think Reverb Nation. We're also on YouTube. We have some live performances cool. on there. Yeah. So for any of the searches, obviously, they would just type in Eternal Mind Control. Yeah, and whatever we're on, it shows up. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And so um, that's about it. I wanted to ask you if you have any last comments you would like to direct to any fans or let them know what you guys are up to or anything you'd like to say. It's all you. Um, I guess I would just like to say thank you for everybody that's come out and supported us. Um, it means a lot to us. And stay tuned for more. Yay. Once again, I'm here with Kat, the lead singer of Eternal Mind Control. Such an awesome band. I highly suggest for you guys to go out there, listen to their music. Once again, you can go to SoundCloud, YouTube, and of course, Facebook, facebook.com slash eternal mind control.